Scarcity forces all societies to make decisions about what to produce from available resources. Before the question of what to produce can be addressed, we have to know what can be produced. The production possibilities model is a simple way of portraying what outputs can be produced using an economy's current resources and technology. The PPF enables us to analyze the last major concept we discussed, opportunity cost. If you remember from the previous lesson, opportunity cost is the cost expressed in terms of the next best alternative sacrificed. It helps us view the true cost of decision making and implies valuing different choices. The PPF model addresses the question of what combinations of two types of output can be produced. The answer to the question depends on the amount of resources, technology, and time available. For example, here is a PPF that shows an economy that produces only units of motorcycles and bushels of wheat. If all factors of production are devoted to growing and harvesting wheat at point Y, then quantity Y of wheat will be produced and no motor cars. Point X shows where no wheat is harvested, only motor cars are produced. In other words, the resources or factors of production in this economy were reallocated from wheat production to the production of motor cars. So the opportunity costs of producing motor cars, represented by X, are bushels of wheat, represented by point Y. Now that you have seen a PPF in action, let's break down the model's parts and what they represent. Remember, PPF stands for Production Possibilities Frontier, or PPC, Production Possibilities Curve. Production is the output of goods and services. Possibility is the maximum attainable amount. And frontier is the border or boundary. So if you combine those into the PPF, the PPF shows the boundary of what is possible and is used as an illustration in economics to show the choices facing all countries in producing goods which use limited factors of production. This slide introduces the major assumptions behind the PPF. The first major assumption is that the types and amounts of available resources are fixed and unchanging. The second is that technology used to produce the outputs is also constant and unchanging. The third major assumption about the PPF is that available resources are fully employed. This means all labor is employed, all land is being utilized for production. There is not a single factory out of use. 100% of all the factors of production are employed. And the fourth and final assumption of the PPF is that production is, uh, is at its utmost efficiency. So in short, the PPF represents the ideal or best case scenario in an economy. But as we know, there's usually some degree of unemployment, whether it be unemployed labor or unused factories. So these assumptions just simply help us to identify specific variables that we can then look at more, uh, that we can analyze in more depth and accuracy. This slide introduces the key features about the PPF. It shows the different combinations of goods and uh, the PPF shows the different combinations of goods and services that can be produced within a given amount of resources. There is no ideal point on the curve, as that would be a normative or subjective statement. Any point inside the curve suggests that resources are not being fully utilized to their uh, efficient level, meaning that there's some degree of unemployment, whether it be labor or land or whatever. Any point outside the curve is not obtainable with the current level of resources, as a point outside the curve would represent more than 100% of your resources, which is unrealistic and impossible. And also, it's useful to demonstrate economic, and the PPF is useful to demonstrate economic growth and opportunity cost, as we'll demonstrate later. If all factors of production are devoted to growing and harvesting wheat at point Y, then quantity Y of wheat will be produced and no motor cars. Point X shows where no wheat is harvested and only motor cars are produced. At point Z, resources are being shared between the production of motor cars and wheat. Points on the PPF or PPC show the possible combinations of, of, uh, of wheat and motor, cars, and motor car production. It is impossible to harvest more wheat without also producing fewer motor cars. The opportunity cost of more wheat is the number of motor cars that are not produced. 
PPS of a, is a curve because not all the factors of production used to harvest wheat and produce motor cars are equally good at both occupations. We'll, dis we'll explore that further in class. Point Z represents 100% employment. This means 100% of labor, all of the land, all factories, all of the entrepreneurial talent are being utilized. But this is not very realistic, as there are always some degree of unemployment, whether there's 3 to 5% unemployment in the labor market or whether there are certain factories that are not being utilized. This is why we typically refer to point V as actual output, whereas point Z is potential output, whereas point Z represents what is potentially possible given 100% use of our resources, whereas point V is more realistic to uh, more realistic to the real world which is why point v is called actual output as the unemployment rate improves and as more people get jobs and as more factories are are being utilized point v will then shift to point w as we get closer and closer to 100% utilization of our factors of production Re again represented by potential output point z Points outside the production possibilities frontier, in this case Z1, are currently unachievable because production at a point on the production possibilities frontier, like point Z, requires using all resources fully and efficiently. Over a period of time, it is very likely that the quantity or quality of resources will change or that technology will improve, making the economy capable of producing more. This process is known as economic growth and is shown as an outward shift of the production possibilities curve. For example, economic growth is represented by a shift in line XY to line y, X1, Y1. Economic growth is a long-term process that permits increased production of goods and services and improved material standards of living. In the production possibilities model, economic growth requires an increase in the resources available for production an increase in the technology used in production, or a combination of the two. An increase in a country's population leads to an increase in its labor force. The quality of workers can also improve over time as investment in human capital, such as education and job training, makes them more productive. When a country has more workers or has more productive workers, the country's ability to produce goods and services increases, Ceteris Paribus. Similarly, when firms invest in capital, there are more factories, machines, and tools with which to produce goods and services. An increase in the capital stock is another way a country can achieve economic growth. Spending on research and development promotes invention, resulting in improved technologies and economic development. Technological improvements can result in economic development by making more productive or by making it possible to produce and use more advanced machines and tools. Whether caused by an increase in the quantity or quality of resources or an improvement in technology, economic growth shifts the production possibilities frontier outward. If the production possibilities frontier shifts outward from XY to X1Y1, the economy is able to produce more of both types of output. This shift indicates that, that if the source of economic growth is, for example, more resources, then these additional resources can be used either to produce more wheat or to produce more automobiles, or more of both. In other cases, such as the one demonstrated here, growth may be energy or industrial specific. The production possibilities frontier may rotate outward from one of the axes. This type of shift would occur, for example, if technological progress occurred only in the automobile industry or if we had more machines specifically designed for automobile production. However, technological progress in the automobile industry can lead to increased output of wheat if we move from point Z to Z1. For example, this occurs because when resources are more productive in the automobile industry, a given level of production requires fewer resources. So some resources are free to move to the production of other goods, in this case, wheat. Because of the technological pr improvements in motor cars, there's actually few, there's less opportunity cost with the production of motor cars. As a result, Motor cars can be developed further and in, in terms of fuel efficiency, which enables a cheaper distribution of wheat, in which case wheat would also expand.
Again, this is an example of economic growth. The PPF is a curve because not all the factors of production used, used to harvest wheat and produce motor cars are equally good at both occupations. See text for full details.